Hello everybody, my name is Paul from Cryonetic. In today's video, we will be creating this cloth physics simulation inside of Blender and then export it to Unreal Engine 4. Now, just to show you quickly, the cloth physics is not being rendered by Unreal Engine 4. This is an animation that's playing out that was pre-done inside of Blender. But uh, before this particular exporter, you were not able to render out these type of uh, vertex animations for Unreal Engine 4. So just to quickly show you which version of Blender I'm using, the current version of Blender is 2.77a. This isn't the version that I'm using. If you want to be able to follow this tutorial, you just have to go to the download section and download the release candidate for Blender 2.78. Now this is still in like a beta phase. It's not an official release. The feature is only available in Blender 2.78. So if you have Blender 2.77 or any pre addition to this, you will not be able to do this um, tutorial. So just keep in mind also that experimental build, it might have crashes. It might not be stable. So uh, install it only if you really want to try out this feature but back up all your other work beforehand. All right, with that said, let's get started. All right, so just once again, Blender 2.78, if you have a previous edition of Blender, this function will not be available to you. You can still do the physics, but you will not be able to export it to Unreal. Uh, this is a development build of Blender or a pre-build, so um, I do expect some bugs. I haven't run into anything yet. But just keep in mind, there hasn't been an official re release of it at the time of recording this video. Okay, so I'm just going to click here. I'm going to select everything and delete it. As always, I do have screencast keys enabled here at the bottom. So if I don't mention which buttons I'm pushing, you can just look at the bottom left. Then I'm going to go over to my Renders tab and change my frame rate to 30 FPS. In my Scenes tab, I'm going to change absolutely nothing. So if you're used to previously changing the setup for Unreal, please do not do that. The problem with it is, is that um, the simulation doesn't work properly when rendering it in Blender. I guess it probably has something to do with the distance when changing it to metric or something like that. So if you uh, I've never changed the settings before, ignore what I said. If you do you normally change the settings, you're going to have to leave it uh, on none and on degrees. Okay, so that said, I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add a UV sphere. Uh, hit smooth shading on that and just move it up a little bit. And then hit Shift A again and I'm going to add a plane. Uh, let's just scale it up a little bit, maybe something like that. And then there's two ways how we can do this. Uh, what we need to do is add a bit more detail to our plane. So the two ways we can do that is either um, go over to our modifiers tab and then add a subsurface modifier and then just add detail under the simple until you'll see here at the top that the detail increases. The other way to do that would be to go into tab, go into edit mode, Push W and subdivide until you're happy with the amount of subdivisions that you have. I'm going to need to hit one more, and I think that should be enough. Okay. And then we're going to go into our physics tab here at the, the right. I'm going to click on cloth with my plane selected. I'm going to do, use the preset for silk. And under collision, make sure it's ticked, just click self collision. Okay. And then I'm going to click on the UV sphere and also under physics, just click collision and then that's it. And then what we're going to do now is remember that every 30 frames on our timeline here at the bottom is effectively one second because we changed the frame rate to 30 FPS. So what we're going to do here is then hit Alt A You see the nice physics simulation that it's running. And the cloth falls off. Here we go. So with that already run through the first time, you can just uh, have a look. And then you can pretty much just set it to where you still where you want to use it basically. So let's do something like this. Uh, 
it goes all the way to down there. Now, if you want to add another plane underneath here and then the cloth falls onto the plane, you're more than welcome to do that because the cloth will not be affected by um, any objects inside of Unreal itself. So let's just have a look here. Uh, let's do it all the way to about 180. Let's do 180. And we're going to set our end time here to 180. Okay. And then I'm just going to enable smooth shading for that as well. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export both of these objects. You can just export the one that you animated. Let me just do that. You can just export the one that you animated by, by selecting it. Okay, for some reason it's missing around with my animation, so I'm just going to render it out again. Uh, there we go. Hit pause. Alright, so we're going to select both. Then we're going to hit export under Alembic or .abc. I'm going to go over to desktop. I'm going to replace that one because I already did a test on it. Now you just have to keep in mind that you would have to set your scene options here so the end frame we would have to set to 180 if you leave it at one it uh, will not play your animation at all and there will be import error under your um, model inside of unreal engine we're going to set the scale to 100 because uh, we didn't set up scene properties or we couldn't set up scene prop properties properly inside of unreal or side of blender sorry and we're going to hit export that should be it we're going to jump over to unreal Okay, this is a scene I previously set up. We're going to hit import, cloth, click open. And then you have the option to import one or the other, skeletal, uh, ex the geometry cache, or experimental, or static. We're going to do skeletal. If you do static, it will just be two static objects at the base pose. If you do skeletal, it will actually import the entire animation. And let's just see if there's any other options here. Uh, no, uh, let's just do force one smoothing group unless there might be some errors because I didn't uh, export with any uh, smoothing groups. So let's click import. There we go. But now there's going to be one problem. Let's just quickly click on the animation. You'll see that if it will open, oh, there we go. The animation will be sideways. And that is unfortunately because of the way that um, uh, Blender and Unreal set up. We don't have any export op options for this, so uh, we're just going to use it as is. Uh, we're going to drag it into the world. Okay, just move it up. All right, there is the plane, so let's just rotate it like this. All right, which way is it rotating to? Let's just move it all the way back. There we go. Now, note that because the plane is one-sided, you won't be able to see the other side. So, let's do that. Okay. And I'm just going to take my player start position and just rotate it. So, it'll be the first thing I see. And now I'm going to hit play. And there you go. Full animation imported into unreal basically looks like your cloth physics or your apex uh, cloth physics without actually having to use that type of cpu power now this is just a, a cool feature that is currently um being implemented into to blender i i know that maya and 3d studio max already have this feature so it is something new to blender it is something that i personally am, am excited about I can see a million uses for it already. Uh, I did try and use Apex cloth physics before and um, my results were mixed. This I find is a little bit more um, stable if you're wanting to do like set scenes or anything like that and you don't really want to use too much uh, GPU or CPU horsepower to render something in real time. You can just import the animations. So and do everything in Blender and then import the animations into Unreal Engine 4. What I also thought is that you can attach a bone and then move it around in the world and then effectively it will look like a piece of cloth flying. You can render that out and 
have it loop in your scene and it will look like the wind is blowing or something like that. So there's quite a number of uses that you can use this for. Uh, I, as I said, I already know what I'm going to use it for. So I'm excited about it. Uh, so if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. I would like to put out a lot more content. So the more subscriptions, the more views, the more content I put out. So like it if you liked it. You can dislike it if you didn't like it. Subscribe and I will see all of you in the next video. Thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.